Hey everyone, Jam here from Jam's Mini Mods, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make simple but amazing looking fur. Now, it is simple, but it is quite time consuming. If you want something a lot quicker, go check out my video on the Green Stuff World Fur Texture Plate. I'll link that up now. That's a much quicker process if you want to smash out an entire army with fur. But if you want to go that next level up, make that like absolutely perfect looking Space Wolves character or anything basically that needs some sort of hair or fur, then this is definitely the way to go. Now, as you can see on the screen right now, I've got some examples of previous ones I've done. Now with this technique, you can kind of do a lot of different types of fur. If you want to maybe represent like bear fur, you can do like really thick chunks of green stuff. If you want to do like horse or something like that, you do thinner bits. And like for example, with this guy I've got on the screen now, the fur is kind of like, looks like it's blowing in the wind a bit more. So I've raised the tips up into the air. Like I said, so it looks like it's ruffling through the breeze and stuff like that. But the example I'm going to show you today is more of a, kind of more generic and it fits pretty much everything like wolf fur, all that kind of stuff. So let's just get on it. Let's make this a nice quick and simple video for you guys. Now, one of the first things you have to do, obviously, is have something to build your fur off of. Now, if you're doing like a space marine captain that's got a cape or something, you want the cape to have fur on it, then you already have something to build off, or if you're doing a shoulder pad or something like that. But if you want to do a loincloth or something like this, you're going to have to make it yourself. Now, you can do green stuff, mini putt, or like I've used here, yeah, I've used a mix of both together. I won't be showing you guys how to do that in this video. This is purely about fur. But, like I said, if you want something that's kind of loinclothy or something like that, you will have to build your loincloth thing or whatever it is first let that set so it's hot and then you can build the fur on top of it i will be having a guide on doing all of this kind of stuff soon as well so keep an eye out for that but right let's actually get started with the fur now so the first thing you're obviously going to need is green stuff now you can use milliput and stuff like that but i personally prefer green stuff for this so what you want to do is you want to use 50 50 between the yellow and blue whatever amount you need depending on how much fur you're making now remember to always keep water nearby handy when working with green stuff. Keep your tools and your hands wet and the surface, everything else, the green stuff will stick to everything. And with this particular style of green stuff where the two colors are touching, I usually cut out the middle because that sometimes can cure and become hard and when you're working with it, you end up getting these like really hard lumps. So always cut that bit out. And when it comes to mixing green stuff, you just kind of mush it all together. Now I don't usually like to initially twist the two colors together and kind of like stretch and fold stretch and fold instead of just like smushing it. i find it it mixes up a lot quicker that way so once you've got a nice and green there's no streaks of different color in there then you're ready to go now because we're going to be putting pretty much individual strands down i like to roll my green stuff out to quite a thin bit just so it makes it easier to cut little pieces off so once again my surface is wet my tools are wet i'm just using a paintbrush as a rolling pin to flatten this out now, like I said earlier in the video, the thickness of your strands completely depends on the type of fur you want to get. So basically, I'm going to take my hobby knife now and I'm just going to cut a tiny little piece of this off. And, and depending on like the shape that it comes out as, I'll, I'll roll it into a little ball first. Now that you have your ball, you want to roll this out almost into like a teardrop slash triangular shape. So you want to put your finger on one side of the green stuff and just gently roll it out to the one side tapers into a nice point. Now the sharper you make this point, I personally think the more realistic the fur looks. I think the way this one ended up turning out, I didn't make each strand quite sharp enough. But yeah, that's just something to keep in mind when you're doing this kind of stuff. Once again, depends depends on the kind of fur you're trying to portray. Now you want to start sticking the green stuff onto your cape or whatever it is. In my case, it's this loincloth that I've made. And you always want to start from the bottom and work your way to the top. So the fur is always kind of folded on top of itself, if that makes any sense. Now, as for tools to use, I've recently bought color shapers. So that these little silicon, like pointy tool things, they're really, really amazing for doing this job. But because I know a lot of you don't want to go out and buy new tools or something, I'm just going to use a damp toothpick. It works just as good to move your to uh, green stuff around. So yeah, I'll use my damp toothpick to pick up these strands of hair and place them on the loincloth where I want them to go. And once they're in place, I press down the fat end there so it kind of squishes it into the place, so it kind of sticks a bit more firmly. 
Now your fur will probably look fine if you just layer up all these little triangular sausage things. But I prefer to put in a little bit more texture. So what I do is I grab my hobby knife. It's going to have to be something quite sharp like a scalpel that I'm using here. And depending on the thickness of your strands of hair, I like to push in at least two little lines of detail into each strand. Sometimes one. Like, so you just use your hobby knife and just poke a nice little line in there, like dab it in there. You want it to be kind of deep because you got to think when you're painting, you're going to have washes and all that stuff going in there. So that detail pops a little bit more. It helps these individual strands look like they've broken up into more strands of hair instead of just looking kind of more like tentacles or bananas. Now, when making fur like this, you also want to remember what's the direction that your model's going in. Because you want your fur to kind of go all in that direction either it's just going flat like this model here it's it's mostly just going downwards with a hint of going off to the left or right depending on which angle you're looking at the model I guess but obviously you don't want every single hair strand to be going the exact same direction because then it doesn't really look quite natural you want slight variance in each strand I mean, don't want it to look too crazy but you know make it look a bit more ruffled up you know they they're in a battlefield there's they're running around, there's wind blowing, all that kind of stuff. Now, like that example I showed at the beginning of the video, if you got, want your fur on your guy to be much more windswept, then you want to lift the tips of the fur upwards so it looks like it's blowing. But now because the guy I'm working on here is stationary, not really moving much, I'm flattening the fur down a lot more. I'm just pushing it down so all like the tips are kind of touching the bit of fur at the bottom of it, if that makes any sense as well. And another little tip here, like I said before, you want to work from the bottom to the top. That's You always want to work from the bottom to the top. But once again, depending on the direction that your fur is blowing in, you might want to work up one side first for like a left or a right. Now, like I said before, this guy is going slightly to the left. So I built up the bottom of the fur and then I worked up all the way up the left hand side first because I want the fur overlapping on the left hand side. So I'll be building the fur up basically from the left to the right, but also bottom to top. Like I always say, I'm not very good at describing things like this, but hopefully watching the video, you'll actually be able to see what I'm doing. And to be honest, that's pretty much it. So just a quick recap, you want 50-50 on the green stuff between the two colors, nothing fancy there. Always work from the bottom to the top when it comes to stacking the fur up. Use your hobby knife or scalpel, something sharp to push in extra detail into there. Once again, so it looks like more strands of hair instead of just tentacles or bananas. Keep in mind what flow you want. Where's the direction of the fur going? Is it down, left, right? All that kind of stuff. Is it how windy is the battlefield? All that kind of stuff. It all tells a story. But yeah, now that you know this very, very simple, but pretty damn effective technique, you can go forth and practice and try it out and uh, like I always say feel free to share any of the work that you do if this inspired or helped you out at all. Now if you enjoy this kind of type of content and all that kind of good stuff you know what to do check out my channel subscribe hit the like button the bell all that kind of good stuff but until then I'll see you guys in the next one bye bye.